One of the things that I see frequently asked is how to create your own globals so that you have methods available everywhere throughout Adonis. And Adonis.js does this themselves via their helper methods. So today we're going to take a look at how you can go about this, and it's actually a lot simpler than you might imagine. So as I mentioned, Adonis.js does have their own helpers, and these are available just by importing them from their namespace. In addition to that, they're also made available within Edge as well, so you can see the same camel case method is available just like so. So let's dive in and create our own. For our example, let's say that we're working with a currency-heavy application. So for that, I like to use currency.js. This accepts a plethora of different types of inputs for currency, and it outputs them as easy to work with values. So you can do basic math with this, as well as change it from cent values to full dollar values and display values as well. So first, let's go ahead and get this installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this install command, jump into my terminal for some random project and paste this in here. So we utilize this as our main helper that we'll want to make available throughout our application. So let's jump into our application here and we can either import the currency.js itself or we can create our own service wrapper. So importing itself is pretty easy. Um, you just import it just like any other module anywhere within your application. So let's go ahead and create a service wrapper for us. So services and let's call this currency service. So right there, we just created a new service directory and put a currency service file within it. And then let's go ahead and just export default class currency service, just like so. Next, let's go ahead and import currency from currency.js. And let's do public static currency equals currency. So we're just going to set the currency import value to currency so that it's available at currency service.currency so that we have access to all of the methods should we need them. And then let's also create a couple of helper methods. So we'll have public, we'll make this static so that we don't need to create a new instance of our currency service class. And let's call this to display. So for this, what we'll want to do is take in a sense value of type number and then return back a display safe value. So this should have a dollar sign in front of it as well as any necessary commas. So we can return and then you can either just do currency or you can do this dot currency since we do have this locally on our service, pass in the sent value. And then we'll want to say that this is from sense and set our precision to two. Lastly, so that we actually get this to a display safe format, let's go ahead and just call format. That will add in the dollar sign and any commas that might be needed for the actual value. So we have one method there. Let's go ahead and add another static and let's call this 2db. So we'll take in a display value and then make it db safe by changing it back to sense. So we'll take in some value. This could be a number or it could be a string. And then all that we need to do here is return this. Again, you can just do currency if you wanted to. Currency, provide it the value and then get back the int value. And that will give us the actual sent value. Cool, so that gives us a basic wrapper for our currency service here. So we can call to display to make it display safe or to db to make it database save ready. We can go ahead and give that a save. So now in order to utilize the service anywhere outside of edge.js, so that would be with anywhere within our controllers, middleware exceptions, what have you. All that we need to do is actually import this class and then call these methods or reach for the currency value in itself. So let's run through a hypothetical of utilizing this. So let's say on our user model, we're storing some account balance. Uh, we're not actually doing that. So this won't persist to the database, but we could do at column here. And let's say that we have a public account balance of number. We can easily set this column up so that it stores sense in the database. And then anytime that's queried, it will utilize the actual display safe value. So we can utilize that via the column decorator here and we can set consume, take in the value, and then let's import our currency service and call our to display method and then provide it that value. And what this will do is anytime that our account balance is queried, it will take the value from the database and make it display safe via our currency .to display method here. We could do the inverse side of that as well, utilizing prepare, taking the value there, and then we can reach for our currency service to db and provide the value. And this will do the inverse. It will take a display safe value and turn it into sense, making it safe for storage in our database. And so this will become a cycle. Whenever we query, it will be made display safe. And then whenever we store it to our database, it will be changed into sense so that we can easily consume it once more later on. And since we put this on the column decorator, this will happen automatically anytime that we query our actual user utilizing the model. So we've got one half of the equation set up. We just need to follow this same approach anywhere within our application outside of Edge. Let's go ahead and finish the other half by covering how we can make this service available throughout Edge as well as an Edge global. So for this, we can easily create a globals file within our start directory. I just so happen to already have one within this project, but you can easily do this by jumping into your terminal and running node ace make prld file and then giving it a name of something like globals like we have here. And that will create out a file like this. I believe you start out with something just like this. So then all that you would want to do is import view from Adonis core view. And then just like we're doing with the roles here already, in order to make our currency service globally available, we can just do view 
global currency, or you can call it currency service, and then provide it in at the imported value of our currency service. So utilizing this approach here, we'll actually namespace all of our currency service methods and properties to the currency namespace within Edge and all throughout Edge. So if we wanted to, we could jump into some file here and we could do a paragraph and we could say, okay, let's do currency dot to display and let's provide it 1000. Give that a save. Let's boot this application up so that we can actually take a look at it. Open up and there you go. We have a display safe $10. So that's one approach of utilizing it. We can also take a look at how the inverse would work. So let's do another paragraph here and let's say 2DB. Obviously we're not storing this to the database. We're just going to print it out onto the page, but we could say maybe we have 350. Give that a save, jump back into our browser, give it a refresh. And you can see there's no space here, but we do have our $10 previous value as well as 350 cents for our database safe value. So this approach is working just fine. Now let's say maybe you didn't want it bound to the currency namespace. How would you go about that? So instead of binding the entire service to a single namespace, we can grab just the properties that we want out of the service. So we could do currency to display as currency service dot to display. And then we could do the same thing for our 2db. So global currency to db, you can give it whatever name that you want here. Just make sure that you're naming it well enough so that it's not gonna have any collisions down the road. 2db, okay. So now we have both our currency to display and currency to db methods off of our currency service available. You can do this with properties as well. So we could do view.global and just name this currency and then provide it currency service dot currency. We could also import the currency package altogether and provide it in as a single value. So we can give that a save, jump back into our view here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these inside of a div so that they're a little bit easier to discern. And let's copy those two and paste them once more. And this time we'll call currency to display currency to DB. And we'll add one more for the actual currency property in itself. So we'll do just currency, let's say 5 million. And then if we wanted to, we could add a million to that and then call format to get a display safe value. Give that a save, jump back into our browser, refresh. So we have 10 and 350 from our previous examples. We have 10 and 350 from our new example, reaching just for the currency to display and currency to DB methods. And then we also have 6 million for our 5 million plus 1 million to format. And you can mix and match these as well. So instead of doing two format here, we could also do currency to display int value. So here we're grabbing the cent value of this currency chain. So this will return back the cents and then we're taking those cents and making them display safe via our currency to display value. So we can give this a save, refresh, and we still have that 6 million right there. So there you have it. There's how you can create your own helper services and make them available throughout the entirety of your Adonis Jazz application, similar to how Adonis is doing it themselves via their helpers. Hopefully you learned something new in this lesson. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe down below, and I will see you in the next one.